This is the all new 9th Gen Shox Open Run Pro. Now, released just this month to celebrate the company's 10th year anniversary. And by the way, if the Shox name sounds familiar to you, that's because these guys used to go by Aftershocks, yes. But anyways, the Open Run Pro is the latest and greatest in a long successful line of bone conducting headphones from the company. Specifically made for those of you who want to jam while say working out, or for those of you who work in high risk jobs that require a high level of situational awareness. So in this review, I'm gonna look at the pros and cons of this thing and see what the fuss is all about. And if you happen to own a previous gen, the question is, should you upgrade? Let's find out after these messages. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Let's do it. First off, let's talk specs. This thing retails for $180 and currently comes only in black. There are more color options on the way. There's Bluetooth 5.1 on board with SBC support only guys. There is no AAC or Aptex to be found here. And if you already didn't notice or know, the Open Run Pro or the ORP as I like to call it, conducts sound through your skull with these proprietary drivers called the Shox Turbo Pitch, among other things. Uh, the weight is a pretty light 30 grams, a little bit heavier than the previous generation. Uh, water dust resistance is the same as previous gen as well, IP55, so it's good enough for a solid sweat, but not for the shower. Now, during my time with it, I managed 9.2 hours of battery life at 65% volume. The predominant material used on almost the entirety of this unit is this grippy, soft, uh, textured surface. Perfect for workout earbuds, to be honest. Uh, the neck band as well as the ear hooks, they're made of titanium, nice and strong and flexible, and they're one size fits all. I wish they were moldable or bendable or adjustable in some form or another. Now, this is the right side, and here is the proprietary charging connector. I wish this was USB-C. Come on, standardized, guys. And and here is the volume up, volume down button that also doubles as the power button. These have been enlarged over the previous gen, so uh, thankful for that. And here is the bone conduction unit itself. On the right side is only the, the only place where you find two mics for phone calls. Uh, one at the back here and one at the bottom. And there are three grills that surround each side. One, two, three, uh, that handles the sound porting and the bass as well. Uh, I found that these collect dust and also skin flakes like nobody's business and it can be a pain in the butt to clean. And I can imagine like right here you can see it already there, it's stuck in the grill and over time, it's just gonna be a mess, especially in this color. Now on the left side, you'll find the multifunction button. This thing handles single, double tap as well as hold. And oh yes, one more thing I wanna mention about the charging connector. This also has moisture detection, so, so if this is wet, it will not charge. So you have to make sure you dry it first and then it will continue. The Shox app is pretty bare bones as they come. Battery status is right here at the top. In the middle here, you can switch between standard and vocal priority modes, where the latter basically decreases lower frequency so that voices are more pronounced. You can pair up to a maximum of two devices with multipoint right here. And then we have media controls right here at the bottom. And really that's about it for the home screen. Now, if you tap the gear icon on the top right here, you get to a screen titled information instead of the usual settings. Now to get to settings, you still have to tap settings one more time. And here you find an oddly duplicated batch of functions, the first two. And also you can check for firmware updates. And that's really about it for the app. Do you want to guess how cold it is right now out here? How about try negative 13? And with the wind chill right on my face, it's probably like negative 20. But we're out here doing the Bluetooth range test nonetheless, and I have some Lizzie McAlpine uh, playing some pancakes for dinner. I wanna eat pancakes for dinner. I wanna get stuck in your head. And I'm gonna put the phone at the end of my deck again where the song is playing, and we're gonna take the Open Run Pro on a little walk. Uh, so these things have Bluetooth 5.1, so should theoretically last about 30 to 33 feet in a straight line. Uh, the phone is over there, and where I'm standing is around 25 feet. And because we, ha we have a Pixel 6 now, uh, the Bluetooth strength is, has increased. It's, I'm expecting it to hit around uh, 38, 40 feet before we have uh, some signal cutouts. Still going strong, I'm at 40. Yep, there we go, 42. Uh, this thing is uh, pretty darn good. So we're all well within specs. I'm gonna keep walking until we get a full disconnect. How you guys doing? Uh, still going strong, well, strong as in a relative sense. Still holding on, waiting for the tone. Thank you for joining me today. Yep, there's the tone right there. It's around 60 feet, almost 60 feet. Uh, and I'm going to keep walking back until we get back in range and see if this thing automatically reconnects. I'm not, I'm not expecting it to, but since we're here, I also want to do something different too and show you how these things 
uh, fit in your ears or over your ears in this case on the temple. Um, so you can see this sits right on my cheekbone where my temple is and you want to make sure when you wear these things that the band is horizontal in a flat 90 degrees with your head because if this droops, I found that if this droops by any means it's gonna hit your neck anytime you raise your head if you're doing workouts like push-ups or if you're riding a bicycle with your neck up like this uh, it's gonna definitely hit whatever's in the back or if you wear a hoodie or a high collar a shirt is definitely going to hit it. You have to make sure it sits. So with that said, I just also want to say that this is not made for the entire demogra demographic of people out there because everybody's ear uh, to the back of head distance is different and they did, uh, Shox did make a slight uh, allowance for that too uh, so you can shift it forward and backward a little bit but it's not for everybody and I wish this was adjustable. Um, so like say if you're pushing, doing push-ups and this thing is like drooping just a little bit it's just gonna shift a lot and then it just threatens to go into your ears so it's not the most fun when it does uh, happen but and quite annoying uh, but for the most part once if you get the adjustment right if it fits your head uh, these things stay stay put like if i go running let me try running here they really they really are stable they're amazing for uh running yeah they, they're really good they stay put just like any other earbuds with wings in them or uh, ear hooks it's really awesome so anyways uh, let's go check out the mics on these things to see how they do with noise suppression all right we're heading down to the road right now to get some sound samples it's the weekend so I, admittedly the traffic is much less so i hope we run into some cars but anyway well not literally uh but i tested these earlier uh and these things when noise suppression hits it sounds like you're underwater a little bit um now here comes some cars you can hear it a little bit better um, when it's quieter, it's really serviceable. You can definitely take calls when you're on a run or something and when cars or traffic uh, picks up or noise picks up, these things are perfectly good. And one thing I do really like about these is you can hear everything going on around you for obvious safety reasons. I love it. And considering that there's only two mics, here comes more cars. Considering there's only two mics per side, these things do pretty well. It plays in mono mode, so there's no stereo in whatsoever. But my intonation, my voice is all pretty darn good. Uh, but anyways, nice job, Shocks. Let me run back in the house and get some hot chocolate in me because I'm just freezing my butt off. Coming into this, I wasn't expecting to be moved by the audio quality one bit, especially considering this being really open air headphones that need to transmit sound through your bones or your skull, then to your cochlear. I'm surprised by the details, especially the vocal fidelity on this thing, even in a relatively noisy setting, like if I'm standing by a main street, for example. Now, it ain't gonna impress you sound peepers out there or if you own any of the recent mainstream headphones or earbuds. Plus, it also hits its limits pretty quickly and I'll talk more about this later in the negatives. Still, when I'm listening to something like Hunter by Bajork, Yes, you notice her voice and the pitchier instruments really come to the fore. And surprisingly, sound staging is pretty good as well, with an airy feel to it. The overall effect kind of reminds me of a set of open-air headphones. Now, for those familiar with regular bone conducting devices like hearing aids, where this tech is used the most, you know that they don't excel in the mid-range very much, but Shox manages to do something about it with their combo of voodoo magic and their numerous marketing terminologies like turbo pitch, or core cushion, which sounds like another name for the fat around my waist, and leak slayer, which sounds like something you'll find in a pair of pampers. Another thumbs up is the concept itself. And yes, I know bone conduction is not new, but the fact that there is nothing jammed into your ear canal, that means there's no pain or no irritation for those of you who suffer from ear infections. And the fact that the tech itself is maturing combined with better innards than ever before, and also in this case, tuning, I'm now totally down with it. And how about this for an endorsement then? Since I've gone the ORPs, these are the ones that I grab when I walk out the door for pretty much anything, like hiking or walking or even working in the yard. I guess in line with the whole fitness vibe, the Open Run Pro, thank goodness guys, has physical button controls. I mean, think about it. It would have been such a bad idea if they had gone touch because, you know, sweaty fingers or gloved hands especially and capacitive surfaces, 
they don't play nice together. Simply put, the $180 marker on this thing is a little bit too rich for my blood and quite likely for many of you as well. And sure, some can say or even shocks themselves can say, yeah, this is warranted because we lead the pack in the tech and implementation pieces. But I think this needs to be around $100, $120 to really dominate the market once and for all and potentially get it the mainstream attention that it deserves. As I demoed earlier outdoors, and if you haven't seen it, check it out right now, depending on what activity you're doing and what you're wearing, the neckband itself can become a pain in the butt. I do wonder if we could have benefited from different size bands so this thing would sit more flush against the base of the skull. Very loud spaces such as traffic or noisy households, I'll tell you what, can and will overpower the sound emanating from these. But I guess on the flip side, this is perfect for those of you who constantly complain about the quality of pass-through modes in other earbuds for not being realistic enough, because with these things, they're as realistic as you can get for obvious reasons. So maybe this should be in the positive section, I suppose. And oh yes, another thing. When you do encounter loud situations and then decide to crank up the volume from especially 75% and above, I notice that the turbo pitch bass ports, they start to vibrate excessively against my cheekbone to the point that it becomes rather ticklish. Yes, I know, I'm a weak man with a rather low threshold for discomfort. This is between you and I, just don't go telling everybody, okay? I'll tell you what guys, Shox is currently on a roll. With each generation, they are refining the formula just a little bit more, making things better. And therefore, I must say that the new one rocks harder now, it goes longer than ever before, and is, well, pun intended, shockingly good for what it is. Now, if you do own the regular open run or the previous generation, I don't think you need to upgrade since the improvements are mostly incremental. In fact, the previous gen is much cheaper and lighter in case you're interested in that model. But if you're curious about this category of headphones itself, you can't get any better than the ORP, yo. So with all that said, I'm gonna give the Shox Open Run Pro a gear of a score of 8.4 out of 10, that's pretty strong. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about it, feel free to comment down below and I'll probably ignore it. Well, that's all I got today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this. And if you found this video the least bit interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel. Mash the button down below. You know you want to. Mash it. Tell your friends and family about this thing because I'm trying to get the 50,000 subs as well. Ask them to sub as well. Yes, I'm trying to get the 50,000 subs by the end of the year. And by the way, I'm also still doing the giveaway to the end of the month for the Soundpeats Air 3. So if you'd like a chance to win one, check out the deets down below. I'll link it there. You can hopefully win one. Um, I'm also welcoming my new supporter on Patreon, Super Yens, right here along with BBQ Jones. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, if you guys like to see more mainstream products, these things can get expensive. I need your help financially, so visit my Patreon link down here. I'm also on other social media. You can connect with me there. And also remember to thumbs up if you like this video and comment nicely down below, guys. And thumbs down. Hmm. Thumbs down to Aftershocks. Yes, I'm talking to you guys. We're going through the name change because Aftershocks to Shocks, it was perfectly memorable the way it was. I'm not sure why you have to do it. It's like if you take my name, I dropped my two A's and then went by Ron. That would just be weird, wouldn't it? Yeah, so there you go, logic. Anyways, that's all I got. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this again. I love y'all so much. Remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? The world needs it more than ever, and it starts with you. God bless and peace out. <laughs>